3, 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Lord, thank you so much for the scriptures. We're so grateful to have truth in our hands, to have the, the access of, of truth, and to not have to wonder what is right, what is true, but we have it. You left it for us. You, you provided people to be inspired, to, to have your breath, your spirit, um, inspire them in such a way to pen these words that we're about to read. And for that, we are just so, so grateful. So Lord, would you bless the reading of your word? And would you bless the words that proceed from my mouth? that they would glorify you and you alone and not me, that they, Lord, would equip the saints for the work of the ministry, that they would equip the saints to live in this world that we're right now stuck in, but where we are called to be. And so, Lord, we trust that you'll use this for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So the scriptures go like this, Matthew chapter 20, and in, starting in verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, a denarius, by the way, is a currency, okay, at that time, uh, he sent them into his vineyard. And going about, out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, you go into the vineyard too. And whatever's right, I'll give it to you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now, when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first. And the first will be last. And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside. And on the way, he said to them, see, we're going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes. And they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And he will be raised on the third day. And we'll stop there. Have you ever witnessed a person who received a very special gift or honor only to realize you could literally feel your blood pressure increasing while you watch this person receive this special blessing or honor? The, the issue that you have is that you know this person well and they don't deserve they don't deserve this special gift or honor, in your opinion, because you know, you know their dirt, right? You know them. You know they don't deserve this. But here they are getting this special honor, this special accolade of some sort. But for you to be the whistleblower would not be appropriate either. So you're stuck in this frustrating situation. This is one of Jesus' many parables a parable is a usually short, fictitious story that illustrates a moral attitude, that's the blank in your notes, 
a moral attitude or a religious principle. So the setting for this parable that we have here is we have this master of a vineyard, also, also called the landowner. And we have Jesus comparing the kingdom of heaven to this scenario, this situation we have. So grapes to ancient Israel were, were a most important crop to them. And it would be like someone in Ohio in 2024 using soybeans or corn in a parable. So grapes, very, very important crop to them. The workday is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Some of you can relate to this. Some of you might even say, that's a short day for me. Uh, some of you farmers. So if the master was out early to hire his workers for the harvest, he was out there prior to 6 a.m. going to get his field workers. By the way, this was, this was normal in this culture, okay? This was a normal scene. It was a normal thing for, for at the harvest time to go and, and find the workers at a specific location. And, yes, the day's wage was a denarius. That was a fair going wage at that time. And so starting in verse 2, we see different hiring waves take place here, don't we? Uh, where the master of the house, the landowner, he sends the first group to the vineyard and you know, start at the workday, 6 a.m. And then in verse 3, uh, he saw more. Uh, the third hour, 9 a.m., he promised to pay them a fair wage. And, and then in verse 5, we see he went out and recruited even more workers. At the sixth hour, noon, and the ninth hour, 3 p.m., and at about the 11th hour, he saw workers standing at the recruitment location, right? We'll just say it's the ADECO temp office, all right, for lack of a better term. They're at the, they're at the temp office waiting, waiting to get hired for the day. Some of you uh, might sound like the farmer in verse 6. Why do you stand there idle all day? Did you, did you notice that attitude? Have you ever had this attitude towards someone you knew who was unemployed? Maybe you spoke some harsh words, which, of course, you justified. Get a job, right? Maybe that's what, you're, what you sounded like. Get a job. Why aren't you working? And they respond, well, because no one has hired us. In other words, we've been calling the, the temp office all day. And even stopped in a few times and still nothing's happening. We're still waiting on a job. So, but let me put another thought into your head. As, as we, we don't know all the details of this situation, of course, this is a parable. But maybe in the parable, these workers also that are standing there aren't the most desirable workers. They're kind of the leftovers, right? They're, they, they're the ones left there still trying to get a job. But also notice... They're still standing there at 5 o'clock wanting to get hired. They're still standing there at 5 o'clock waiting for someone to stop. That's that. So we also can witness some dedication here on behalf of the, the, person, the, the people trying to get work, right? So just trying to set up the story in your heads as we, we process this, this parable that Jesus is teaching. How does this landowner respond? He says, you're hired. You're hired. It's, it's, a, it's a crop I got to get harvested ASAP, and, and it's time sensitive. Go to the field. For heaven's sake, it's the 11th hour. Ah, the 11th hour. This is where we get our expression in the 11th hour. Have you ever heard that expression? So Webb Garrison, in his book, Why You Say It, he wrote, from the Babylonians... Greeks and Hebrews adopted the use of sundials whose faces were divided into 12 segments. Hours were counted from daylight to dusk with darkness coming at the 12th. A famous New Testament parable, imagine that, Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16, expressed the idea of lateness by saying some would-be laborers came at the 11th hour of sunlight. Western civilization later modified timekeeping so that 12 o'clock came to mark both noon and midnight 
That means the sun is hardly halfway across the heavens at 11 o'clock in the morning and disappeared by, uh, disappeared by that hour at night. Force of the New Testament story is such that we still borrow from it. Despite the real position of the sun at the time, we continue to say that the 11th hour is the last possible time to make a decision or to take action. Isn't that interesting? This is right, right where we get that, our, our little phrase that we use, and maybe you've used it before. It, they came at the 11th hour. But this is where the parable gets interesting because Mr. Farmer here, uh, he tells the foreman to settle up with the day laborers. Okay? Okay, he, so he calls the form, so, or have maybe to have the, the ADECO HR office cut the checks, right? Uh, so please don't miss, though, how, how Jesus tells this story, because he's intentional as those hired last are the first to get paid. Did you notice that? The ones who were hired last, the guy who came, the, the guy, got, people who came at the 11th hour were the first to get paid. Evidently, it's all out in the open, meaning everyone knows what everyone else is getting paid. There are some real HR and business practices that are getting violated right here. You just don't do that, but hey, this is the parable that Jesus told. But imagine being the guys who were hired at 6 a.m., okay? So you're there at 5.45 a.m., standing around the, the recruitment center, Right? You're, you're waiting to go out in the field for your, you know, to, to, to work all day, get your pay. So imagine being the one who was dedicated enough to get your tail out of bed so early and get down there at the recruitment center and, and you got hired at 6 a.m. and you see the guys hired at 5 p.m. get a denarius. So what are you thinking? Yes, we came to the right farmer. We came to the right place to, to work today, guys. We picked the right field to harvest in the right, right um, grape field, because here, here we have these guys that only worked an hour getting a denarius. What are we going to get? Hmm. Only to realize that everyone was getting paid a denarius. What? Oh, what in the world? Let me remind you, this is a parable. It's a short, fictitious story with a religious or moral principle. In verses 11 and 12 here, um, and on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, the last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. So those verses display the 6 a.m. workers' frustration. They are frustrated, folks. They're frustrated. So permit me to point out the obvious in the parable. The farmer, the master of the house, the landowner, however your translation might call this guy, is God. Some theologians believe this parable addresses people being saved at the 11th hour, okay? So some, some believe that it, this has to do with people at the very last moment of their life, their, breath, their breath in their lungs, their beating of their heart, that they, they put their faith in Christ as Lord and Savior. However, you know, there, there's, there's others that say that it has to do with God's grace and generosity, God's mercy. As you and I walk this earth, living in this age of the kingdom of God here, waiting for the perfect kingdom to come, the, the, the kingdom of heaven, we must be okay with whoever God chooses to bless. We've got to be okay with whoever God chooses to bless. This is hard. Because, well, I know that person. I know who they are. I know their dirt. I know how lazy they are. And look what they received. So, by the way, do you doubt that God has shown blessing and grace to you? So in all of this, do you say, 
oh, uh, you know, why are they getting this? Why, why is such so many good things happening to th- these people that I consider, you know, kind of lowly, kind of, you know, they, they're just not very dedicated. I mean, consider what you deserve, folks. Think a little bit about what you deserve, chiefly God's judgment and wrath. We deserve His wrath, so stop looking around at others and simply just follow Jesus. You, you deserve the worst from God. You deserve His judgment. I deserve His judgment, and, and yet He has blessed so much. He's given so much to me. So stop looking at what the other has. Luke 12, 15, and he said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Also, can I just point out, look at how the farmer responded to the 6 a.m. workers. He said, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. (laughs) Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. You agreed to a denarius. I gave you a denarius. I'm doing you no wrong. So, let me encourage you. So this guy, he, this farmer, he, he responded with gentleness. So let me encourage you, when you feel wronged, when you feel like, you know, you've been done bad. You've been cheated out of something because you see somebody else get something else that maybe they don't deserve. Let me encourage you to respond gently, gently in a Christ-like way. Don't fuel, the, don't fuel this aggravation that they might have. Respond gently. That's what this farmer did. That's what this farmer did. Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. And in verse 15, am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? Do you begrudge my generosity? Because that's what he was showing was generosity, right? Oh, but they didn't deserve his generosity. Hmm. Do you begrudge my generosity? Literally, this means, is your eye evil? And maybe your Bible even has a little footnote that says that at the bottom. Maybe you have a little, like a little number by, by uh, verse 15. And at the bottom of your page or in a margin somewhere, it says, uh, or is your eye evil? Isn't that interesting? Remember several, yeah, we'll just say a few months ago, in, in my, my message about so, so many you know, things here that they have to do with our eyes. They have to do what, with what enters into our eyes and, yes, even what comes from our eyes. Because I hope you all realize there's something that comes from your eyes as I look out across at each of you. There's something that comes from your eyes. Some of your eyes are closed. No, I'm joking. A little bit. You're telling me a story. And the story is that I need to pick it up a notch. No. Um, So literally, it means, is your eye evil? The laborer, the 6 a.m. laborer was blinded. He was unable to have compassion and was instead consumed with fairness. Fair. That's not fair. Boy, does that sound childish? Nursery workers, you know, that's not fair. Do you see, do you understand how we can be so wrapped up in fairness that we fail to see how precious people are to God? If all we're doing is thinking about fairness. People are precious to Him. You are precious to Him. Others who don't act like you are precious to Him. Other people who don't smell like you, look like you, talk like you, use the same kind of language you use. Precious precious to him, precious to God. People are made in God's likeness, whether they behave like it or not. 
and he sent his only begotten son, his one and only son, to pay the price for their sin condition. As John 3.16 very plainly says it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God so loved the world. After it got cleaned up? No, not after it got cleaned up. Way before it got cleaned up. There was nothing clean about it. But God so loved the world. Uh, Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Fairness? You want to talk about fairness? Then let's talk about what we really deserve. And that's God's wrath. It's his judgment. It's what we deserve, but he showed grace, right? He showed each of us grace. He gave, graciously gave us this gift of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So I have to ask, how's your love for people? How is your love for people? Oh, people just get under my skin. I just, people, hmm. How's your patience with people? How's your patience with people? Think about God's patience with you. How patient's God with you and me? Oh, my. Do you, do you ever say, they're just really testing my patience? <laughs> Do you think your father, heavenly father, is ever saying that about you? You are really testing my patience. And do you know what he says? But I'm a patient father. And uh, it doesn't mean that sometimes he might not permit something to come your way to get your attention, my attention. 1 Corinthians 13 Verse 4 through the beginning of 8. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. This, this is love. Love for people. This is patience. This is this is cheering, cheering for people who receive something and know they don't deserve it, but it's cheering for them. So please don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying that people shouldn't have to work, okay? Please hear me. I'm not saying people shouldn't have to work. I'm not saying that people should not earn a fair wage. Yes, people should work. People should also, yes, earn a fair wage also. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we're on this earth for such a short time. We're just here for a little bit. And you might say, oh, it doesn't seem like we, we have no idea how many days we have. And that's just the truth. That's just how it goes. We don't know how long we have. That's not a scare tactic. That's just truth. That's truth. So don't get so consumed by who is getting what. Hold on to your things loosely. Hold on to your things loosely. Stop looking around at what others are getting and live generously. Live generously. Walk with Jesus. It just might be the 11th hour, folks. It might be the 11th hour. Have, have you noticed lately that maybe you're, you're hesitant to cheer for somebody who has received something and they don't deserve it? Let me encourage you to find in your heart, find in there, find from the Lord. He, he can give this to you through His Holy Spirit. He can, he can empower you to do this. Find in your heart where you can celebrate for somebody who receives something that they truly don't deserve. Maybe you can relate in that 
right now you're just feeling kind of overwhelmed at what God has given you, how he has blessed you, and you know, I don't deserve this, but Lord, thank you so much. I hope you have that heart of gratitude also that spills into gratitude towards others, cheering for them when they receive something they don't deserve. Is it the 11th hour? Only God knows. That's not for us to know. But oh my, is it a joy to walk with him in this hour right now. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this time in the scriptures. I ask your blessing on what was said this morning. I pray, Lord, that it would resonate in people's hearts, not because I said it, but hopefully, Lord, it's because of your scriptures and your Holy Spirit that can take what was shared and use it for equipping to live out this Christian life, to live out this life on this earth, this dual life in, on earth, but also with one foot in the heavenly kingdom. And so, Lord, we're just so grateful to be walking with you. You are so faithful to us, and we're grateful to be called your child. Ah, oh, Lord, bless my brothers and sisters. May they be willing to cheer for those who don't deserve to experience your grace or the grace of someone else. May we just have hearts of gratitude and love. In Jesus' name, amen. stand and we will dismiss with I will praise him. And I saw the glinting fountain open wide for all my sin. The Spirit's wooing when he said, Will thou be clean? I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away. Seems straight and narrow, all my glimpses slipped away. My ambitions, plans, and wishes at my pleasure's lay. I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. blood can wash away each sin. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad he took me in. He's forgiven my transgressions. He has cleansed my heart from sin. I will praise him I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, his blood can wash away each day. Glory, glory to the Father, glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit, glory to the three in one. I will praise Him, 